Lord Henry, welcome. Thanks for being here this evening. This evening where I'm at, anyway. Hey Andy, welcome to the stream. Good evening to you as well. There's a lot of, it, it was kind of funny after the weekend where I said that I, it was my opinion Larian was winding things down and we wouldn't see any patches anymore. Then like an hour after I ended, um, people started coming out with, um, with notes about, about that happening. I'm kind of just waiting to see what happens. So as far as I know, and I'll go look right now, actually, because I haven't followed up on it in a while. Um, oh, hey, Smurf. Well, welcome. Don't stay up too late tonight. I don't want to be responsible for keeping you up again. <laughs> Because what I had seen online was some posts about um, some Reddit threads and that sort of stuff about it. Um, but I hadn't heard Larian actually come out and say anything about it. Um, I know there was uh, a Discord message about it and that sort of stuff. But yeah, I think all all the Discord message said was that Patch 7 was going to go live uh, later this year. I don't know when that's going to be, though. Yeah, sorry if I'm, if I'm coughing. It's not ever going to go away. <laughs> um, I think I'm pretty well resigned to that fact. There's still 
it's still a little early in the spring, so allergies where I'm at are still pretty bad. Um, but I'm pretty sure that this is long COVID and symptoms associated with it and that sort of stuff. So I think it's something I'm going to be dealing with for a while, but we'll kind of see how it's going. Yeah, sorry if I coughed into the mic. I apologize for that. Yeah, I mean, crossplay is a very uh, wished after thing. If you read through the forums, that's one of the big things that people are commenting they'd like to see. It's a big ask this late in the development cycle. Um, I mean, I would love to see it, but if they haven't already put significant work into doing it right now um, already, then it, it's it's a big ask for them to put that work into it right now but but yeah i mean we'll uh, we'll see like i say there's a lot of reddit threads about it right now <laughs> um so we'll kind of see how it ends up playing out no worries andy i, I no worries marv i appreciate that um yeah it's i mean it's uh, like i say i've been i've been through worse in my life um, so, this is a minor inconvenience. Some days it's worse than others, but it's just uh, a minor thing. Still hoping that things, you know, calm down a little bit on the allergy front as we get more into summer. And we start getting out of all the rainy, uh, rainy weather here and get more into the hot and humid so it can knock all this pulling out of the air, but we'll kind of, we'll kind of wait and see. But no, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I was doing a lot of reading on online, and I will continue out throughout this week to... I did find out what happened with the paladin, with the bug in the paladin livestream with Nairoma, so I, I know how to fix that. So I'll fix that on stream, but nothing but guesses and hopes and prayers for the honor mode playthrough. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see, because I haven't opened it up. Like I said, I haven't opened it up since we quit the live stream over the weekend, so we'll see how it goes. To be fair, um, <laughs> from the time that... The, a lot of time that I've spent in the in the UK, it's wet there a lot. <laughs> so. Minthara is an incredibly powerful paladin. She also has the benefit that she comes with a bunch of um, illithid powers pre-installed. So you don't have to spend tadpoles on them. But yeah, her soul branding ability to be able to add an extra 1d4 fire damage. That means with the soul bound or the charge bound warhammer with 1d6 lightning acid damage from the ring and then cold damage from the draconic elemental buff from the drake throat glaive and then adding fire damage on top of that you can stack a lot of different elemental damage types with her
yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different options to go with her. And she has some very interesting interactions with the Drow twins in <laughs> in Charessa's caress. If she's in your party, especially if she's uh, if you've been romancing her. It's so fun to play. It's so fun to play. Dropping him out there to act as a tank is just incredibly satisfying to watch. And especially once you get him up to the level where he's able to cast Ice Storm, that whole build just turns stupid. Because now you're able to AoE inflict chilled and frozen and yeah that's when things really get really get crazy welcome everyone to today's live stream episode number 39 of our Baldur's Gate 3 Bard gameplay series. I'm Commander Jorval, and I want to thank you for coming along on our journey today. So, as is want to happen uh, with Larian after last week's, or this past weekend's live streams, um, where I said that Larian was winding things down and I didn't expect there to be any more patches, um, a bunch of news has come out about the fact that there is going to be another one that comes out. There's a lot of conjecture right now um, about it. Um, they've been doing things like uh, data mining Steam upload logs and that sort of stuff um, that indicate that it's going to happen. Um, there was a Discord message from one of the Larian developers um, a bit ago about it. Um, but just that it was going to be there and sometime later this year. Um, so there's a lot of speculation going on. There's Reddit threads. Um, there's articles about it all over the place. Nothing solid as to what it's going to entail, but a lot of conjecture. Knowing what they've been focusing on in the past few patches, um, you would expect that there's going to be some fleshing out of some of the endings and that sort of stuff. I wouldn't expect that you're going to be a, going to be seeing a whole lot of changes to any of the existing gameplay. I would expect it's mostly just bug fixes and things like that, um, as well as, you know, like I say, fleshing out some of the endings, because um, they've been doing that for the past couple of patches now. But we will keep our eye on it, and you'll know about it during one of the live streams uh, when it happens. So. Until then, we'll just wait and see. So I think that's it for the admin notes. So on our recap, at the end of last week's episode, we got into the town of Rivington. We made our way down to Ferg and separated Shadowheart from the party so that we could uh, have a trading interaction with him we're gonna go look at that again real quick and then we're going to head up to worms crossing quickly and start the open hand temple quest lines so we'll jump back in here And we're going to play this differently because 
of how we've played it in the Paladin livestream. So, um, so here we are um, with our bard. We've left Shadowheart um, back up here so that she's nowhere near Ferg because as soon as she comes within range of Ferg, he's going to leave. Welcome. You see to peruse the special goods, I take it. So, from our list here um, of things that we're looking at, there's a couple of things that probably interest us. First is the Hellrider Longbow. Gaining a plus three bonus to initiative rolls um, is really nice. Advantage on perception ability checks um, without having an armor slot do that for you is... Uh, normally a shield is very very nice um, the fiend the fiendish fire ability being able to um, inflict fairy fire on an enemy that you hit them with can be again very very useful because um, again being able to impose advantage on all of your attacks against that enemy from range can help with your ranged spell attacks as well so your cantrips and the Eldritch Blast crit build from Will and that sort of stuff can certainly benefit from enemies um, being encased with Fairy Fire. So we are definitely going to pick this up. The rest of these can be very, very useful. Um, chilling Counter, if you have a dual-handed or a dual wielding build, or not necessarily dual wielding, but because it's light and finesse. But if you have a two weapon build, um, having cold snap in the offhand while you have the um, cold based gale build in your party can be very useful as well. Because here, whenever you attack with it, they have to succeed a constitution saving throw or be chilled. And remember, chilled makes them vulnerable to cold damage so having somebody that's able to inflict that vulnerability and then have gale take advantage of it can be very very useful as well um, for the rest of these i'm probably not going to um, invest in these um, the other stuff that i have is um, or the builds that I have don't really focus around any of these weapons. I'm not going to be doing um, a Dwarven Tavern Brawler type Barbarian build or anything like that. Um, but I think for the rest of these, I'm okay leaving them out. As far as the rest of the stuff that we have up here, um, Malice is always nice. Um, because you can blind and poison a target at range. But the rest of them, the Elixir of Radiant Resistance, I will say, though, um, this is one of the few places where you're going to be able to buy this. So if you want to buy one, take a partial rest, come back with a reset inventory and buy it again, you certainly can. There aren't that many enemies that are going to be utilizing radiant damage against us however um that ra the few enemies that do have it can hit really hard with it because they're all paladins for the most part and that can really drop some big damage on you so having these elixirs can be very useful in certain fights um coming up throughout the remainder of act three so if you want to find or farm these go ahead they're really cheap to be able to buy so and this is one of the few places that you can reliably get them but as for the rest of it i think i'm going to leave all of this here seth and i really like the spiritual great axe um, that comes along with it but it's not enough for me to to cast it um and then unequip it and equip my weapon before the fight starts 
and then have the great axe with me. It's just it's, it's just too much clicking around and all that sort of stuff. But the spiritual great axe is is really really nice. Um, so I think I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna balance this out. And that's going to be it. Okay, now as far as where I'm going to uh, to put that. So, looking at our dexterities. So, Will's already really high. Shadow Heart would get the best additional benefit out of it because her dexterity is the lowest, so she's going to be rolling lowest on her initiatives. Um, what does she have right now? She's got the Titan String Bow right now because she is strength based. So I think I'm actually going to give this to Kurs instead. Okay. So that's going to allow him to get um, higher initiative rolls to be able to bring the, the paladin damage out faster I'm not paid um, in our encounters. So... As we've seen previously, we have the Requisition Barn down here, and the Gur Camp, and all of that sort of stuff that we can certainly do, but we're going to head up the opposite way here. We're not going to head up there. That's why we need to walk just a little more. One foot in front of the other. Okay, and we're going to group everybody up. And we're going to head up north here. Okay, and... We're going to head into the open hand temple. If you won't help us, at least let the children in. The crying one weeps today. Our father Logan is dead. Murdered. I... I don't want to talk. My heart is in mourning. Okay, so we'll go in here and have some conversations. And you will have to pardon me. Um, I may take a pause every once in a while. I, uh, one of my cats is taking a, a very large interest in the cursor on the screen. So, yep, here she goes again. So. I want to have a word. We let more outsiders in, and more Baldurians die. Duke Stelney, Father Lorcan, it's no coincidence. We have faith here, Bill. Faith in people, no matter where they're from. Who had more faith than Father Lorcan? How did that work out? Thank you, stranger. Father Lorcan's passing has saddened us all. Passing? He was murdered by one of the fugitives he was harboring. Bill, I beg you, be quiet. Even sinners receive Ilmater's grace, and Father Lorgan knew that. We don't pick and choose who we aid. Thank you, stranger. I take some solace knowing that he died in Ilmater's service. Does Ilmater's service involve protecting heretic absolutists? Or perhaps I missed that sermon. Enough, Bill. You seem a kind soul. Our temple is open to you. Walk well. Okay, by the way, how many inspirations do we have? We're up to three. Okay.
And here we go with the most annoying holy font in the world. Look, investigator. Brilgor might have been a criminal, but he was no murderer. You're missing something. You have to be. Enough, Yanis. Listen to yourself. You are defending a man who ritually slaughtered your high priest. The evidence speaks for itself. Brilgor killed Father Lorgan, then, be it out of shame or profane duty, offed himself with the same blade. Case closed, Sister Yanis. Shitey little elephant. Oh, um, I apologize, stranger. Language like that hardly befits a rector of ill mater. You could certainly say that. Two people just died on temple grounds. A high priest, Father Logan, and one of the new refugees, Brilgor. Investigator Valeria thinks it's a murder and is content to blame Brilgor. The politically convenient target. Feel free to look around the temple. But fair warning, the investigator won't change her mind without significant new evidence. I can tell you where to find her, but she won't be very chatty, I'm afraid. Shira passed away last year. Peacefully, mine. We buried her in the crypt under the temple, if you wish to visit. Valeria never found the murder weapon, so that could be a start. Anything disproving the refugee murder suicide angle, really. Charette's caress would be my best bet. That's her usual haunt after closing a case. I really hope you find something, for all our sakes. Okay, and there's our fourth inspiration. So good, we're back up where we need to be with those. Um, we have some quest markers here. So, asking about Shira uh, advanced the Help the Spirit of the Amulet quest, which... Uh, we're going to complete while we're here. And obviously we we'll want to gather more information about the murders. I want to make sure that I have... Okay, it might be in... Okay, so I I don't have the sentient amulet on me. Okay, I want to make sure that I do. Okay, so it's on Astarian right now. That's going to allow me to complete that quest and for the amulet to change. I don't actually know what happens if you leave it in your camp chest or on one of your other party members. Um, if you complete this chest without it being on you, I'm just honestly not willing to try it here. Um, it might work out okay, it might not. I've said all I have to say already. Now I just want to pack up my kitchen and leave. Soup kitchen's no good if we've no one to feed soup to. Besides, Father Logan's gone. Murdered. And now they're blaming a refugee for it. No. Brilgore was a nice bloke. He came a couple of times for soup. 
Potato chowder was his favorite. Didn't seem the murderous type. But what do I know? Some folk didn't like how he looked after the refugees. But I don't think they'd kill him for it. At least, I hope they wouldn't. That's a scary thought. Okay, so we'll head out here. What ails you? Marsh fever? Featherlung? Be quick, I've not got all day. What do you want to know? I reckon Investigator Valeria is right. One of the refugees killed him. Cruelly, too. They cut off his hand, sawed right through the bone. I found a paralytic poison on one of his wounds. Logan was alive while they took the hand. He just couldn't scream. It's sick. We give them everything. And all we get is nothing but a good man to bury. Okay, and here's Father Lorgan. And we do have the Amulet of Lost Voices. Shadow Horde also has raised dead. The corpse regards you lifelessly. from the cellar. Refuge. A poison blade. Paralysis. Hiding Grilgorm from fists. In red, took him to the tunnel with the rest. Oh, fool, fool. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Okay, so we got a lot of updates to the quest there. So, we learned a bunch of things here, and talking to Father Lorgan gave us the fact that he was murdered in a hidden tunnel beneath the Open Hand Temple. We can access it through the Temple Crypt. Okay, so we have a place to go um, to continue our investigation here. Let's see what this does. Belfry. Bell ringers only past this point. And the crypt is down here. I want to quickly make sure... ...that we're equipped again. and we can head down here. All right, so we start down here in the crypt. You can see our quest markers not that far away over here to find the murder scene. We do have some stuff that we can loot down here. And again, if we were interested in picking up every piece of gold that we possibly can. Some of the things down here are, are worth a lot for the weight that they take. Especially torches. Okay, we have a pouch here. 
I believe everybody's got a... No, we don't. We need to pick up the pouch. Uh, that went to somebody who already has one. That was great. And then again, drop all of the potions and throwables and that sort of stuff in there just to clear up the inventory a little bit. Okay. And down here, you're going to find a lot of camp supplies. Um, alcohols, wines, that sort of stuff that you can send no off. Traps, please. I'm going to take a quick look, actually. We got 4,183 camp supplies. So I'm going to quit looting camp supplies. How about that? Okay, so we're going to move back here a little bit. I'm going to put everybody into hiding. Split our group and make our way out here. Okay, so let's see what this does. The thing that we need to do is actually I will put my Silver pendant back on. Breathe deep and move. Okay, so we made the perception check there. And we made the perception check there as well. So finding these two heraldic signs. On my way. Activates two buttons, which then opens up this secret back passage here. Okay. And you can see here that the crime scene is just located inside of here. So we're going to group everybody up here again near this doorway. And then we're going to separate it and make our way out here. We're going to start taking a little slow. Because we don't know entirely what we're getting into out here. And there you can see the detection cones just barely start to come into view. Okay, and now you can get a glimpse here of... What all's up here? He spends too much time with his prey. He's going to get us caught. Okay, so you see that we have Muz, Zom, and Rudd here. All level eight. And Rudd, actually all three of them turn at various times to look at different things. And there is a time when the area behind Rudd is completely empty. You have to time it fairly well and you have to wait for it. But that time does pop up. Okay, so we're going to make our way in here. We're 
going to be very, very careful about this. Okay, and see, here's the time when you can get in there. The detection cone is completely empty behind him. And we want to try and exploit that. Okay, so we can't get up here into this corner. And still be out of that detection cone. And now we just kind of want to wait. And we have more than enough movement to get to him from here. So I'm going to hover over turn base mode and just wait here. For them to turn around and for that detection cone to clear up. Be patient, child. Soon. Right there. You are a weapon, my sweet. A sharper one than okay. So we definitely want to get as much damage onto Rudd as we can. And then pop him down here for some fall damage on top of that as well. So why is now sir we go check his place okay well i'm not getting hide checks so i'm not going to uh to mess with it okay so i'm going to try a mobile flourish here this is going to knock him backward Okay, so they're all surprised, so they are n not going to be surprised anymore, I don't think. Well, yeah, they will be. Their surprise is going to run out on the next turn here. Okay. So now I can bring everybody in here. And now we start having options on how we want to go about bringing these attacks. And I think the first thing I want to probably look at... Not a peep. Don't want to think about why my eye is itching. Wonder if the gods are watching... His me. will. We're going to bring Will up here and again examine them and see that they have a multi-attack if you are ambushed. So again, if you come in here and you start this off with a conversation, they are going to morph into, into their normal form and then that's going to trigger an ambush surprise round on you. That's why it doesn't make any sense to go in here and have a conversation. Just go in here and start this thing off. Um, and go from there. So a couple of different things to do here. They're all nice and grouped up for all of our AoE spells. And I could cover all of the walkways and everything with them trying to get to us. I don't think I'm going to be needing cold resistance. Okay. So that outright killed Rudd. Wow. Oh, he failed the saving throw. Seven, 
two from the Callus Glow Ring, 17 from the Charisma Modifier because of Elemental Affinity. And he was hit for Callus Glow Ring again. So, interesting. Something else had to hit him because that's not enough damage. Oh, yeah, because I had knocked him down there from being up top. Right. So now for Shadowheart, on top of the ice surface here, can I get... I can get Call Lightning here. How many... Got two. Sure. So now they are just stacked up with radiating orb and reverberation again. Keeping my head down. And now the disintegrating nightwalkers are on will. Probably want to. Change those out next time. If I'm going to be using Will more for ice-based stuff, then I'll probably change those to Kerr so that he can walk out there and not worry about um, taking any damage Never want when he does it. But for now, I'm just going to pop up here. And what do we have? 23 and 8. So yeah, there's not a whole lot of things to worry about here. So let's just see if we can kill Zom here. Okay, we can't. What now? So Will got all of his action economy back. And you missed the one person I really wanted you to hit. What should I do? Okay, let's see if Shadowheart can... What do we have as far as this stuff goes? Yes, yeah, so you're going to have disadvantage there. I really don't want to waste her... action economy that much. Oh, I can't reset this. It just, it did, she, it reset her action economy. Okay. And now I'm going to get rid of the ice surface. Not wish to live in more interesting times. Mm. Another step forward. Mm. Someone was arranging these corpses. What for? And we'll do some searching down here. I love the names. So you're going to find the clown's severed torso down here. This is going to be useful. Um, later on. Okay, and this is <clears throat> Orin the Red. If you didn't get a chance to read it, you can pause it in the video afterward and read it. Um, but the severed torso is marked as a quest item. We're going to send that to camp. Is this some kind of display? It is a set of body parts, and it's one of seven, I believe, that we're going to need to find. Crawler Mucus is amazing. Allows you to coat your weapon with a poison that can paralyze a target. Um, paralyzing a target leads to critical hits, guaranteed hits. Um, incredibly powerful to have. Then we have a, another letter here that talks again about all of the killings that are happening.
and here we have a flowery key. Okay, so as far as the quest line went, um, we found the trail of blood that led us to the crime scene, and then we found a strange flowery key on one of the doppelganger assassins. It might open something above ground we should investigate further, and we are going to go investigate that as soon as we finish exploring down around in here. So we have this back area back here. There's a lot of camp supplies What's that in here? I'm Looks not like going to loot. People are trying to hide in the tunnels here. Doesn't seem to have worked out so well for them. Okay, and there's another letter here um, for from these refugees to the priestess. Um, that whole thing of them sheltering down here didn't work out so well as we've seen. And now we need to pick up the pouch and. Shadow Heart needs it. Okay. Not gonna pick up any more of those. Open up. Okay, another request for Father Lorgan. He was coming down here and giving them food and that sort of stuff. This is where he was trying to hide real gore as well. That didn't get sent to camp last time. None of these did. Okay, so we'll just move some of these items over here real quick to get rid of the encumbrance. Okay, and we have more areas that you can search through, loot. There's going to be uh, camp supplies and other stuff that you can sell down here. Now here we have an area that has Cloud Kill in it. Okay, Cloud Kill is a spell. It's a poison-based spell. So what we're going to do is actually we can just go up here okay so we have one here we need to probably be on the lookout for more of these so I'm going to drink it I need to Swap these out. Now I'm going to break my group. Yeah, it's guidance on myself and make my way down in here. The poison is going to completely protect me. Or the poison resistance is going to completely protect me from this. We can disarm this vent here if we'd like. But it's a really, really high DC. So even at the level that I'm at here, I'd have to roll a 19 to guarantee it. So you're better off just taking a an elixir of poison resistance. Trap. 
be cautious. And dealing with the chest. And taking the gold that's in it. What is that trap that I found? Interesting. I wonder if it's just another vent that I can't see that's causing all the cloud kill down here in this area. Okay. You can make the jump across here um, with a high strength character. Yeah, I think it is. I think the vents here are just a little bit bugged out. Yeah. I think it's just a couple of vents down here that are showing up as, as the trap there. Hey, Pinhead Larry, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so we can make our way down here. There are various other things that you can loot down here that you can sell off. Later, we'll pick up a few things. There for the taking. Still alive. That might be worth a look. What's inside? Okay, and here you have the stillmaker. The Stillmaker is incredibly useful as an offhand weapon because of the hold person spell um, that is available to it. It's basically a free cast of hold person. And hold person is incredibly useful in a lot of the things you're going to be doing here in Act 3. Old person, don't sleep on it. Um, up until now, we haven't had a whole lot of use for it because the fights haven't been that difficult. But as we get into some fights later on, that spell can be an easy an easy mode button for you to use. This blade's wicked look matches its deeds. Poor Father Logan. Okay, and as we know now that the Stillmaker is the murder weapon. Okay, so we need to find what the key opens now, and that's going to be our next order of business. But first, we can do something else. Down here you have a cave mouth. We're not going to go out this way. But the cave mouth will lead you out to the area underneath Worms Crossing Bridge. So there are two ways to get into this cave here. One through the outside, where we came in through the Paladin livestream, and which brings you up right behind everybody. And you are in this fight here um, right off the bat. Or come in through the kitchens which is how we came in this time. So the game intends you to come in and have the conversations up top and find out about this whole area and then venture down here. Whereas in the Paladin live stream, we just came directly down here and kind of did those conversations afterward. It's all six one, half dozen the other. Doesn't matter how you do it. This is just the more, uh, I guess, uh, game intended way of of playing these encounters. Okay. So we have some double doors here, which are going to lead us into the help the spirit of the amulet quest. Okay. We can go in here into this other room. There's always some really good spells in here. 
on the shelves, and we did perceive the trap on the display case. Okay, this is a 20 DC, so I'm actually going to move everybody else out of here. I'm going to ungroup the party and come back in here, because there's a, a better than average chance that I'm going to fail this. Okay, I did okay. Don't give me trouble now. Oh, our first nat 20. Nice. And in here is a various assortment of rare or very rare potions um, that roll out of the potion loot table here. We got Elixir of Sea Invisibility, which can actually be very, very useful for an encounter um, later on, but for now, not much use of it. So I'm going to quickly group everybody up and put everybody into hiding and ungroup again. Yeah, now I'm gonna make my way in here. Wonder if the gods are watching a crypt. This must be where Shira Klawin is buried. You can read the plaques. Here lies sister Shira Klawin. Date of birth unknown. Died 1491 DR. And here while things are happening. The tomb of the Amulet Spirit's granddaughter. Time for a family reunion. And actually, I think I have to click on the sarcophagus first. Yes. While things are happening up there, you can make your way back towards the entrance if you want. Faithful to the crying god, long didst I wait, only to find thine empty flesh. Gone, thou might be, alas. <laughs> He's going to possess the body here, and he's going to move out toward the middle and start a conversation. Oh, honored Shira, her spirit has fled, and her body but merely a husk. <laughs> Swear I did to shed this foul mania and bestow it upon Shira. She was to endure, to suffer, as was her god Ilmata's want. Who now shall bear the madness Shah has wrought on me, so I might no longer suffer? Oh, 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 oh. Shall it be thou? Okay, so there are two options here on how you want to play this out. One with very little benefit to it, and one with one of the better items for the monk class in the game out of it. So it's really a no-brainer on how you play this. If you agree to take the curse on yourself, then you are going to gain the ability, if you pass the checks involved afterward, to cast Asha's Hideous Laughter spell once per long rest without consuming a spell slot. Not really the greatest of all things um, as a benefit to have, if you say that you do not want to take on the curse, then you're going to have an encounter, and once that encounter is done, then the amulet that you're carrying is going to change into a different amulet. And that's the way we're going to go. <laughs> well, if laugh I must, let our alliance end on a lark.
And this is why I came in here with my monk, with the high armor class. Because there's going to be a surprise round here. And I also moved back toward the door so that they would all have to dash to get to me. Okay. So they're not able to attack on that same turn. So now I have uh, my options on how I want to approach this. So the first thing to do is look at where the detection cones are sitting. Okay. So they're quite a ways back out there. And Keep it quiet. Let's get going. Just out of view. Really? So the detection cones are a little weird. Okay. Because he was spotted by her, but yet her detection cone isn't necessarily crossing him. I'm afraid to move him. There is work to do. Have to keep low. Yeah, see? She was spotted as well, but the detection cone's clearly not overlapping her, but it hasn't brought them into combat either, so... Still marking them as yellow on their I screens, even though they've seen. been seen. So it's a little bit odd here. So we're going to go and start off with a slashing flourish. This is going to allow us to attack up to two enemies at once here. So even though I might be able to get a location where it says I'm going to be able to hit all three, the game won't let you. You're going to hit two. And... Now I'm going to bring Will with darkness here and see where he can cast this without moving. Okay. Now the detection cones are gone. Well, in it. So let's see if I can move into this darkness cloud without triggering combat or not. Looks like I can. And again, I want to be close to my bard here. Okay, I will probably drop a level one divine smite on that just to get the kill. And Shadowheart got brought into the fight there. When Kurz did. So, yeah, that was a little strange with the detection cones there, but it is what it is. Oh, I can use my bonus action for Blazing Retaliation. Sure. That's going to frighten everybody. Okay, so critical miss. Blazing retaliation hit him. Sentinel procced. And how many hit points? 26. That was a low roll on that. Survival is 
all that matters. See if we can get close enough to get Sentinel to proc again. That's a more useful number. This is my time. Just want to get Will into the Coming darkness through. here. Frightened, always good, and we're just stacking up the debuffs here. Nothing will stand in my way. And we might as well use that since we are definitely going to take a short rest after this. Oh, perfect. The pride of Easy the enough. <laughs> So this is bugged. I'll report this on the forums. I hate it had to end like this. A torturous fate by any measure. Sharp as ever. A long way to go still. Okay, so now if we right. what now? look in our inventory, the sentient amulet has changed. It's no longer rare. It is now very rare. Still has Shatter, which is always a good spell to have. Now the Key Restoration class action has moved to the Greater version. So this is now no longer restoring um, two key points. It's restoring key points equal to your Martial Arts die, which you will learn more about... Um, in in the monk class it also removes the check you have to go through to save against tasha's hideous laughter whenever you put this on this is this amulet is now free and clear and available for you to utilize for your um for your monk builds so it's a it's probably the best amulet that your monk can have just because of the scarcity of monk amulets in the game. Um, there are other amulets that your monk can benefit from as well, but as far as a specific class item, this is by far the best one that you're going to have um, for your monk at this point. So, very, very useful thing to have. Um, make sure you take the opportunity while you're down here to pick it up. Now, you can also finish this fight by just going after Shira. If you kill Shira, then the others are going to disappear. So you can focus on Shira to end this fight a little earlier. Um, I just took some extra XP by killing the other three here. So in loot, a scroll of Sunbeam, that's always nice. Some incense that you can sell because incense again has a really good uh, gold to weight ratio. The individual sticks don't. How much farther can I go? And that's it in here. Yes. me make sure I didn't miss I thought I did so here's a scroll of dominate person defender of the people 
scroll of arcane lock, some holy water, and there's some other books and stuff that you can sell up here. Could come in handy. I've got a long road ahead. Okay, now looking at our map, you can see we've cleared we've cleaned out this area under here. So we can head back up to what path lies before me? The kitchens. Curse to put my hands on everything. And I forgot to change out my gloves and everything again. Seems like a good moment to talk. We can see if Sister Yana has anything to say now that we've completed all this investigation. How goes the search? That's it. Proof that Valeria missed something. They'll have to listen to you now. If you can convince them of Brilgor's innocence, then perhaps Ilmeta could shed one less tear this day. Okay. Speaking of Brilgor. Can head out this door here. And this leads you into the sleeping area in here. Can head out the back door, and this is going to take you out Always to the back there. area that's going to have the cemetery in it. Hey, there are some things that you can search while you're out here. Potion of speed, very, very useful. Stockpile those as much as you can. You can read all the tombstones out here if you'd like. Um, just gives you some more lore about the temple here and that sort of stuff. There are some more camp supplies. But here, there's a dirt mount. And a conveniently placed shovel if you don't have one to be able to dig it up. You search the wooden casket, you have Brilgor's body. And now we can speak with the dead here. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Dwarf. Red clothes. Stranger. Father Lorgan, helping me. Fists after me, needed to hide. Yes. Never. He was kinder than most. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Okay, so now you learn that Brilgor definitely did not kill um, Father Lorgan. This is the back area of the, cir or the Circus of the Last Days. We're going to be exploring much more of that. A little bit later here. So now if we look at our quest log for the Open Hand Temple Murders, we need to still find the whatever the flowery key unlocks. And that's what we're going to go do now. Okay, so we're going to head out the front of the Open Hand Temple. Please, in the name of the Cryon One, have mercy. 
you remember. Eye color, hairstyle, accent, anything. Why don't we talk about something else? Did you try that? I don't care how big they were. I'll give them a piece of money. But if we look up here toward the north, where we want to go. You see, this area is kind of blocked off. We don't necessarily want to have this. Actually, I think you can have this encounter even without having talked to them. I'm thinking here. Honestly, I don't know if I've done it that way, but I think it happens either way. If it doesn't, though, we're going to be in for a heck of an encounter. There must be something. Um, debating. You know, let's try it out. Whatever happens, happens here. I don't think you need to have it, though. Halt! By orders of Lord Gortash, refugees are no longer allowed in the city. Turn around. Or do you have the means to support yourself? My good lady, I am Will Ravenguard. I will not pay to enter my own city. Ravenguard? Ugh, more like the ghastliest tiefling south of Neverwinter. No refugees. It is decreed. Okay, so I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to offer up the gold here. Right. Article 30.1.5 of the Council's Decree on Extraordinary Wartime Measures... I am confiscating that. The city thanks you for your contribution. Your name? Well met, citizen. Your parasite stirs. From the construct, you feel connection, resonance. I am a steel watcher, citizen. Here to serve the people of Baldur's Gate in the name of Lord Enver Gortash. State your business. Aha, uh -huh. eyes open, body still. Behind the watcher's gaze, a presence awakens. You are seen. You are known. Your party's prior transgressions are reflected in its stare. As witnessed by the cult's ever alert, scrying eyes, it has heard the howls of slaughtered goblins. It has seen the deep shadows of Grimforge and the stone floors left bloodied. It knows the cold walls of Moonrise Towers and the cultists who fell there. The Watcher speaks directly into your mind with a voice like poisoned honey. You are marked for special treatment. Not simply an enemy of the people, but an enemy of the absolute. Come quietly, or die. Hey, you can have a, an encounter here. I'm going to consent to be arrested. Your peaceful surrender has been noted. You will be transferred to Worms Rock Prison, where you will await further sentencing. Eat this, you pile of junk! Okay. So, yeah, you don't have to have met the Iron Hand Gnomes first for this to happen. They are going to pop up and attack the Steel Watcher with a flash blinder grenade. That's going to burn out its optics so that it can't see and it's going to interrupt um, that entire conversation. And this is going to allow us to move into Worms Crossing 
And we'll talk to Will real quick. Men, women, children, all barred from entry. A damn travesty. A decade ago, Baldur's Gate would have welcomed any and everyone seeking refuge. Who would take in these souls, if not the Jewel of Baldurin? As long as Gortash is in charge, they'll be left shivering at the gates. All part of the plan, of course. Step one, create an army and order it to march on the city. Step two, shut the gates in the name of security. Step three, bask in the applause. Gortash hasn't made Baldur's Gate safe. He's made it a prison. And when his army breaks through, the people will have nowhere to run. To make this city a safe haven, we'll need to bathe Gortash and his allies in their own blood. Okay, Will's being a little bloodthirsty here. But he's probably not wrong, either. Okay, so we're going to make our way in here. And into this door on the right. And this is Sheress's Caress. Okay, and in here we're going to speak to Mamzelle Amira, who's in charge of this establishment. A weary traveler, battered and bruised. You come for sustenance. No, decadence. A mien cool as ice, yet eyes burning hot. Oh yes, I know your bliss. A sturdy dwarf, a leather whip, she gives, you receive. Or have I misjudged you? Oh, you crave a performance. How decadent. It's Fion you seek, our stern librarian. She isn't here today, alas. Your penance must wait. Well, we've other ways to fill your void. A drink for one, a pair of drow for another. Choose your sin. Swishing. I'm no fortune teller. If I had a crystal ball, I promise I'd already have consulted it. Truth is, Fionn's gone well missing. And my hands may be skillful, but they were not made to turn every last stone she might be hiding behind. To service is my calling, not to be served. Ugh. But I'd be a fool to say no. The girl kept my coffers near overflowing. Two flights up, then turn right and right again. That's Fionn's pleasure room, Elminster's library. Here, take the key. Okay, so that started a new quest of find the stern librarian Fionn. If you haven't gathered what Shares's Caress is, Shares's Caress is very famous in the City of Baldur's Gate lore, in the Forgotten Realms lore, in Tabletop. Um, it's a brothel, has all sorts of very, very interesting clientele that have visited it over the years. Um, and this is a very interesting place to see us uh, have brought to life in the game here. I'm going to bypass quite a few things. I'm going to follow her directions. Two flights up. Okay, and then take a right and a right. You see we have two quest markers here, and this first one here is for Find the Stern Librarian. And that's for this door here. Okay, now inside of this room, we're going to pick up a soap bar. So what does the soap bar allow us to do? 
we can consume it. It doesn't actually consume the bar, but what it does do is clean all of the blood off of your characters. So you don't need to carry more than one of these if you just want to swap it from character to character. Otherwise, there's more of them that are sitting around here in Shares's Caress that you can pick up. And over here, we have Fionn's journals. Okay, he's getting worse. The whispers, the night terrors, the blood. I know he's hiding something, and the others in the flop house know it too. Okay, and the journal's gonna update. The pride of the gate. And we're gonna go pick up a bunch of stuff in here that we can sell. Just because there is a merchant here that we're going to up our attitude with. And then we'll be able to sell all of these things off. The music box is worth some decent gold. And we have some outfits. Some strapped choker leather ensembles. So yeah, there are some fairly interesting outfits um, in here. One move ahead. Could have. Okay, so if we look at our map, we see we have a new quest marker popped up right across the street for Investigate Frego's Flophouse. We need to find a way forward. And that's where we're going to go next. Nice. Have no fear, we will be coming back to Sharessa's Caress. There's so much to do here. And here's the flop house. Bloody ages we spent hiking from Murren. And they won't let us in the city proper. Bollocks. We're adventurous, damn it. The bridge god chatted some shite about a coronation. Couldn't really make head nor tail of it. Hey, and this is kind of giving you some hints that the way into the city itself was blocked off and we're going to have to find a way to uh, to get in there i need a quick word come to Baldur's gate he said adventurers get welcomed as heroes he said poxy drim and his bleeding notions looked like that was a nice great axe she had on her back sir good sir give me three days and Oh, I apologies. Thought you were someone else. Uh, greetings, so forth, so on. Fion, one of Mamzelle's girls, who laughs like a star's twinkle. <laughs> Not seen her for a ten day. Ten days and four bells, to be precise. Not that I'm counting. Missing? I hadn't thought her missing, just not here, or elsewhere. Oh, I suppose that's like missing, but with extra words. You don't suppose the murderer who's on the loose got hold of her? Oh, goodness, no. It's too horrible to imagine. The landlord, Sir Frago Antuna. A most generous soul, I assure you. How dare you accusing an upstanding citizen like me of being a dwarf? I'm a halfling, you oaf. My mistake. 
And then last, we have Grishka here in the corner. Word to the wise. Give that ill mate to Temple a wide berth. Rude buggers. Certainly not bringing my trade there again. Does that excuse being rude? Excluding folk? Come off it. They wouldn't let me in. Spouted some tripe about my sort and absolutist murderers. I only wanted to sit down a minute. So did I. You're welcome. Good luck out there. You can trade with Grisha. She doesn't have much of anything on her, but you certainly can. Blooming hell, you look famished. I've got some victuals that'll warm you right up. Fion, poor lass, works her arse off for the mumsel, but don't get much in return. Not see no mug for a carp sage. I figure she'd gone up the road while the going was good. Kill her on the loose, cult army marching wee way. Been thinking I might scarp her too. And you can buy camp supplies from her if you would like. This is a reliable source to be able to buy them. There's also vendors out here on the street, all up and down here, that sell different types of camp supplies as well. So if by this point you don't have enough, you'll certainly have the opportunity to buy as many as you want here. And I need to have this now. Hear me Forgot about this one. Worms Crossing, the welcome mat of Boulder's Gate. This is it. I'm almost home. I would, but you have so many friends already. Excellent. Now that that's settled, lead on. Yeah, I don't need a Starian leveled up right now. The other thing I want to do... Okay, so this is not glowing. So I think we're okay. Just making sure. Yes. Hey, you want to have a Starian with you? During this encounter here. I had just forgotten about it. He actually wants to talk to us. Baldur's Gate is right over the hills. And so is Cazador. Cazador and his right of profane ascension. An imperial soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. Then you've been thinking the same thing. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> What's a handful of the wretched servants? If they're anything like me when I was enslaved, they're all but begging for death anyway. After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. We'll be glorious both, you and I. You'll have your day too. 
Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Casador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Cazadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. And that is exactly why we have a story in, in our party now. And you want to make sure when you come up here into this area with Pale Petros and Deliria that you don't have any items equipped which are giving off the daylight effect. Um, if you do, both of them are going to vanish and you'll get a, a comment from your party, one of your party members, about them having vanished. Otherwise, have a star in your party and go up here and have the conversation. We should go. I do not want to face the master if we're late for his black mass. Soon, sister. I only need one more mark. We have enough for the master. No more are needed. It's not for the master. It's for me. I spent 100 years eating rats and dogs. But soon, I'll be able to feast. I want someone there, ready for me. And once the Mass is done, and our Lord grants us freedom, I can celebrate by drinking them dry. Cazador promised you your freedom, and you believed him. Ha! You were never burdened with intelligence, Petras. But your load seems especially light these days. Astarian? It... It cannot be. Oh, that's no way to welcome back a brother, doll. <laughs> Didn't you miss me? Why would you come back? You got out. You were free. Isn't it obvious, sister? He wants to ascend with the rest of us. He heard about the ritual and the power our master will grant us. So he came back with his tail between his legs. Hoping all would be forgiven. You always were an idiot, Petras. No! Where is he hiding? Tell me! No! No! Brother! Tell me what I need to know, or I swear you'll burn! The Master is preparing the Black Mass. Beneath his palace, there's a defiled chapel. It was hidden there the entire time, hidden from us all. <sighs> I'm going to stop, Cazador. What the hell's happened to you, Astarian? What are you? I'm more than what I was. And I'm not afraid of anything anymore. The sun can't harm me. Cazador can't compel me. I'm the only person who can stop him. Now go, before I change my mind about roasting you, brother. This isn't over, Astarian. Poor fools. They actually think Cazador will save them. Yes, and they'll be trembling in fear when they tell him. They're no threat to us. And they have no choice but to do Cazador's bidding. I pity them. Worst of all, they don't know their fate's already set. <laughs> They're doomed. The only question is whether their lives will be sacrificed to a monster like Cazador or 
serve a greater purpose. Seven sigils on seven spawn. And Cazador has the other six. We have to face him and take that power for ourselves. Trust me, I'd rather slaughter someone else's family, but if that's what it takes, and it's not like their sweet innocence, they brought Cazador just as many victims as I did. <laughs> You're not getting sentimental, are you? I thought you were with me on this. <laughs> I knew I was right about you. You're a true friend. And now we know he's skulking beneath his palace. We can take the hunt to Cazador. All right, let's go. This place stinks of rat blood and despair. That's a great cutscene um, with a star in. It's, it, like I said, there's a reason Neil Newbon won, you know, his best performance um, award <laughs> um, this year for this game. Um, a story is just amazing, and that was a great performance in that uh, in that scene. I love watching it play out. We're going to actually keep a story in with us for a second. Now, what do you reckon, lass? You trust these steel watcher thingamajigs? Oi, I'll second that. It's all right where well, we can get work repairing them, but what happens when they build something else to do that? Uh, it's no good, I tell you. Okay, and then we have a ladder heading up. You can see our quest marker is above us. And in here, there's a few things you can loot. And you see the wardrobe here. You can see there's a room behind it. Interesting. Okay. So the flowery key unlocks this door. We are definitely going to break our group here. And okay, I passed the perception check, and now I'm going to click on the blood here. Notice some blood has pooled on the wooden floor. And there's an investigation check to be made here. That's why I put the warped headband of intellect on. Didn't need it anymore. You notice the blood source. A body hidden under the bed. Okay, and now we can find Fionn's body here, and we can yeah, speak with the dead. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Murdered by my son? It's to be expected. Some families just don't get along. Found his secret. My sweet boy. Why? Kill.
The corpse remains silent. It does not know. Do off like me dresses in red. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Okay, so now we find out that the doppelganger was imitating Fionn's son and killing people throughout uh, Rivington here. When Fionn found out, found that out, and found this room, he killed her, stashed her body underneath the bed. And again, now we have Fionn's key. I know the key. It's identical to the one held by that corpse in the tunnels. And again, here we can read a few things. So, the bloodstained note doesn't really have a whole lot to it. There is a pouch up here. Might as well pick that up and send that to Astarian. Now, Astarian can take all of his... Oh, he might have already had. Nope, he didn't. He needed that pouch. Okay, clean up his inventory. Down here, we have a bloodstained parchment. Okay, and this shows all of the victims and future victims that the doppelganger was going to go after. Those wishing to face the Dreadlord's Tribunal and enter the Temple of Ball must slay the targets on this list and frame the corpses as a murder by the Cult of the Absolute. Bring the victim's hand as proof of the killing, walk in blood. The people that we see here, Stelmane we've known has been dead for a, while, a long time. Now we know that um, the aspirant killed them. Father Lorgan, we now know that um, he was also killed. Dribbles the Clown, we haven't heard about, but it's at the Circle of the Last Days, which we're going to be visiting. And remember, we did find the bloodied torso which is going to relate to that. Alexander Rainforest is in the Lower City. We don't have access to the Lower City yet. Most of the rest of these are either in the Lower City or the Upper City. Um, people that we're going to be meeting later on. Okay, so if we look at the Find the Stern Librarian, we need to go talk to Mamzelle Amira and report that again. We found the lair of a ballist murderer in Frego's flop house with a target list on it. Father Lorgan's name appears on the list. We should now show investig investigator Valeria. Okay. So we need to go. Back and talk to uh, investigator Valeria. And we also need to talk to Momzella Mira, both of which are located conveniently in Shares's Caress. Now here, you can find the Scarlet Leather Armor. It's just light armor that gains you a plus one bonus to stealth checks. Nothing very special about it. Various poisons here you would expect from a murderer's enclave here. And that's about good. Oh, we do need to look at... These tunnels were full of shapeshifters. Father Lorgan's name is written here too. Hey, if you don't... If you make your way up here first into the flop house before going to the open hand temple and you pick your way in here, you're going to get Fionn's key here, which is going to then allow you to um, have access to her room over in Charessa's Caress, and you can work this quest backward as well. And these temple plans will, you can see when you zoom in that they're at the same shape as the open hand temple. So this will allow you to work that quest backward 
starting from here as well. So you can play out these sets of quests multiple different ways. Um, and this is just the more game intended way of doing it. But the game puts ways in here for you to play this however you want. And that's, again, one of the things I really love about the game here is that it allows you to play all of these quests in multiple ways and you're not locked into a very linear progression. Okay, so we're going to head out and we're going to go right across the street. Talk to Mom's Elamira. Your pleasure is mine, sweeting. Murdered! Ye gods, the poor thing! Oh, by the mother of cats, I pray she didn't suffer. Don't miss that face. Else, the regulars will miss her more. They swarmed her like honeybees at the hive. Oh. Losing Fionn slashed a big hole in my coin purse. I should get to replacing her. I have little coin, but I offer sin in abundance. Talk with the drow twins in the tap room. They're legends among the regulars, almost myths. Tell them they're your gift from the Mamselle, and let them show you why. Anything else on your mind, sweeting? Okay, so that is going to complete the Find the Stern Librarian quest. And as such, she's also gifted us private time with the drow. And that's something we're going to explore later. But now remember, we also need to report to Valeria, and Valeria's up here. Another case closed, another bottle open! Huzzah to Valeria! <laughs> Hang on a sec. I recognize that face. You were talking to Yanis after I left the temple. I bet she's put you up to something. Why must you busybodies insist on interrupting a perfectly good night? Ugh, I know that look. You remind me of Devella. Fine. If you doubt my conclusions, out with it. What have you found? A Baal plot. You as well. Devella's been harping on about Baal for months. Fancies herself something of an expert. I assumed it was just a bunch of conspiracy cods while up in fear-mongering. But she's been unusually insistent about this one, even for her. <sighs> Fine. I'll bite. What's your theory? No need to wave documents at me. I'm already drowning in paperwork as it is. Constable Devella is going to be a real pain in the trunk about this. Since you seem to be on an obnoxiously similar wavelength, why don't you seek her out? She'll be at the Elf Song Tavern. Show her the list and I'll stay and inform the fist here. Oh, and you'll need this pass. It'll give you access to the lower city. Well, what are you waiting for? You've a bloody conspiracy to solve. Move! Okay, so that's going to move us on to... It's going to complete the Open Hand Temple Murders quest, and it's going to move us on to the Investigate the Murders quest, and it's going to give us the Lower City Pass. The Lower City Pass is what we need to be able to make it through the guards at 
the gate down here. And now you can, well, you can't see it. Um, but there's the same Steel Watchers and Flaming Fist down here, preventing you from getting into Worms Rock. Well, now with this pass, we're able to get past them. Okay, this isn't the only way that you can get past them. There are two other ways that you can I, acquire a pass to get into Worms Rock. You can also just bypass all of it with um, some Misty Steps and or Fly Spells um, to get in there. However, that's more problematic. So now what we're going to do is, and again, um, we now have Investigate the Murders here as part of Get Orin's Netherstone. We've learned about the Murder Tribunal um, in the Temple of Baal, and we'll need to deal with that as part of her quest. We are going to get or have to deal with Gortash and Orin at some point. The Daughter of Darkness, again, we're on the lookout for the lookouts, and we already know that that's Ferg. So at some point, we are going to have the confrontation between her and Ferg. We have bought everything from him we need. Um, Will says that we need to keep an eye out for Mazora. She's somewhere here in the city of Baldur's Gate. And Astarian, obviously, we met up with his two uh, fellow spawn, and we've learned more about the, what's going on underneath Kazador's palace. Help Kithrak Voss and avenge the Iron Hands. We're going to be exploring more of that here in a little bit. But first, now that we have Astarian in our party, we want to head over to a specific location. This is front page material. And have an encounter. Oh. Yes. We'll deal with that here in a little bit. Nimble was at the gates. Nimble was the one that threw the flashbinder grenade at the Steel Watcher. So we now have the quest marker. This is for Avenge the Iron Hand Gnomes that points out this cave entrance down here. We, like I say, we will be exploring that, but just not right this second. We're going to continue around this way. Dead chickens. And we're going to head into the Gur camp. Now remember, we've had an encounter with a Gur before. Rechtei hathran rust. Frey, thou disk durovna. Frey, thou disk ablast. You've clearly walked into some kind of ceremony, but it's nothing that you recognize. You do recognize the language, however. These people are Gur, a tribe of monster hunters, just like the one you met in the Hag Swamp. Im orak, nete, krasim, netra. So, the impossible spawn walks among us in the blazing sun. We have been looking for you. The last time your friend came to our camp, he stole our children, our future. When we sent Gandrel after you, we wanted to interrogate you, to discover how to save our children and then destroy you. But things have changed. You have changed. Is it true you left your master? 
that you broke the spell that binds you to him? Uh, well, I, I mean, uh, kind of. It's a long story, honestly. Free. Not while his master still lives. But he has, perhaps, earned a second chance. We have tried to save our children once already, attacking Kazadorzar's palace at first light. Even then, it was too well defended. But if his own spawn approached, someone he thought he could control, he would throw his doors open and welcome you in. And once inside, you could do what we could not. You could save the children you damned. You don't know Kazador like I do. He's merciless. You want me to march into the lion's den and save your children? But I promise you, they're already dead. Excuse me. Did you not hear anything I just said? They're gone. If our children are truly gone, then we ask for blood. I know you can understand that, Spawn. I suppose. Yes. Yes. Revenge, I can do. Thank you. From me and all my people. If you can do this, we will be in your debt. You. I've lived a life of violence and sin. You have stolen lives, broken families, and caused immeasurable grief. Doing this will not right those wrongs. <laughs> if you're trying to encourage me, you're failing abysmally. But it will be a start. You may still be redeemed. Please go. Time is short, but we will see you again when it is done. Okay, so the Gur want us to help find their children. Astorian seems to very much believe that they are not alive anymore. And if they are not alive, we need to exact revenge. And Astorian is fully on board with doing that. Okay. So now we are done with... Astarian here. So we're going to bring Jahira into our party. Watching gods. But I never thought I would be happy to see the city again. <laughs> Much less to smell it. The Harper safe house I spoke of is on the bridge at Worms Crossing. Dantelon's dancing axe. Information. The Chosen have a head start on us. We'd like to know what they've done with it. Flattered as I am, you're fully supported as it is. At your command. Okay, now I haven't leveled up Jahira at all, and we're going to need her combat ready for what we're going to be bringing her into the party for. I'm not going to be optimizing Jahira's build. I'm going to keep her as a pure druid. However, I am going to change her to be Circle of the Moon. For her prepared spells, again, most of these at the low level don't matter. Okay, at level two, we're going to have access to hold person, and we definitely want to use that. While we're here, we will put enhance ability on.
Okay, for our cantrips, these don't really matter. Again, that much. We're not interested in paying a whole lot of attention to what we're doing with her level up here. Um, for her feet, however, we're going to take ability improvement for her, and we're going to up her wisdom to be able to get it to 18. We're also going to up her constitution by one. Okay, and now we're getting more interesting things to be able to deal with here, especially with Call Lightning. Okay, at level 6, she's going to start getting Primal Strike. So while you're in Beast Mode, your attacks are magical attacks. So they overcome resistance to normal damage types just by being able to attack while you're in wild shape, which is a huge benefit. Now, getting access to level 4 spells is a pretty big deal. Um, a few things that are interesting here. Hey, Philip, welcome. Hey, Solo, welcome as well. Sorry I was paying attention here and uh, didn't notice everybody coming in. It uh, looks like YouTube's giving me an error here that I might not... My internet might be slowing down a little bit. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. I apologize if we get any buffering or anything like that. It looks to be intermittently slowing down. So now it's slowed way down. This is not me, I don't think. I don't think it's, it's my, not my computer. Let me just do a couple of quick checks on my internet here real quick. I apologize, everybody. Okay, yeah, this is not my internet. This is my internet provider, so... Okay, so I just typed in chat here. Um, hopefully it's going to correct itself. But we'll keep an eye on it here and see what uh, what's happening. It's it looks like it's intermittent, comes and goes here. So for your level four spells, Ice Storm is extraordinarily useful. No, it is not all of you. Um, I'm looking at my internet speed here, and it is definitely my ISP. My home network is running perfect. My ISP is dropping my streaming rate to half of what it should be. So, we'll see if it corrects itself here. Um, but Ice Storm is very nice at level 4. Conjure Minor Elemental is good, but we're going to get something better a little bit later on. Um, Grasping Vine is very, very good with all the verticality in this game, and we're actually going to take that. For our second feat here, we're going to take Resilient, and we're going to go Constitution. That's going to gain us proficiency in our, constitu in our concentration uh, saving throws.
And now at level five, or level five spells, that's where you get Conjure Elemental. So you no longer need Conjure Minor Elemental, and Insect Plague is just amazing. Mass Cure Wounds is really good um, as well. And for our last cantrip, again, doesn't matter. And for our last prepared spell, we're going to take Mass Cure Wounds. Okay, so here we are definitely going to try and outfit Jahira a little bit. Okay, so for... Armor types. We're now going to have advantage on our constitution saving throws as well as adding our proficiency bonus to them. And we're just kind of throwing in some stuff to get us through this encounter. I'm not really all that interested in optimizing anything that we're doing here. I'm just going through some of these really quickly here. Like I said, I'm not really interested in keeping up, you know, optimizing any of this. So. Okay, and then for our boots. Useful. Useful. And last for the amulets. Okay, and then for our shield. Yeah, sorry everybody, the... Yeah, now I'm, uh, now I'm getting three times the streaming rate I should be getting. So I think it's trying to catch up right now. Can you all hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me. Are we all caught up here?
Okay, looks like it's stabilized again. Or it looks like the internet speeds have stabilized. So we'll see if the buffering goes away and see if we're back. No rest, be you wicked or wise. Okay, I think it's caught up. I just checked, I just brought up YouTube here on my end, and it looks like the stream's caught up again. Um, it's working on my end, anyway. So, let me know if you're still having issues. Um, but we're going to leave camp again. And we're going to head back into. Um, we're going to head back into Worms Crossing. Yeah, I think it should be caught up now. Sorry about that. I have no idea what my ISP is doing, but that was entirely my service provider. Um, that was not me. So hopefully we're we're uh, somewhat back to normal now. Okay. We're going to make our way back on the main road. We're going to make our way back to Worms Crossing here. And we need to make our way to Danthalon's Dancing Axe, which is where Jahira wants us to meet up with her harpers. Okay, and that's right up here. A hero is nothing without the right equipment. See Danthelon's dancing axe for all your adventuring needs. You're not wearing armor to meet my mother and father. And you want to have Jahir in your party when you go through this. Our stock is greeting, sir. Your noble bearing brings a little class to my humble. You can turn off the charm, Entharl. She's with me. Blueberries. Thought I had a sale. You look tired, Harper. I missed you too. They're already here? Down below. Here's the key. Agreed. Didn't stop you here as lot from nesting in my cellar. <laughs> in Farrell's no harper. In claims no love for those who are. But he's been known to shelter us when we need it. Entarl has been known to charge rent. Harpers have been known to ignore him. Now go on. The short father may send me an actual paying customer today. To buy? <laughs> You're already my favorite. Okay, now Danthalon is one that we might want to consider upping his attitude. And that's for a few items that he carries. The first of which being the Blightbringer. So attacking gnomes or dwarves with this weapon receives a 1d4 bonus to attack and damage rolls, which is always nice. It also has Prey Decelerator, though, which is arguably the better of the two. When you land a critical hit with it, it slows the target creature. Now, slow is a very underrated spell. With slow, you 
your movement speed is halved, your armor class and dexterity saving throws are reduced by two. Those are all great. However, the next set of things here are what are really important. The enemy can't take reactions. They can't make more than one attack per turn. That could be crucial where we're at a level now where everybody has extra attack and things like that. So being able, being on the receiving end of an attack, an extra attack, an action surge, another attack, and another extra attack can be devastating. And having them slowed means that they're only going to be able to do the extra attack. They can't use a bonus action, but they can use their action surge and only, again, attack once after that. So you seriously limit the damage output on a slowed target at the level that we're at now. So Blightbringer is actually very, very useful. The Horns of the Berserker are, again, another very, very good um, monk, or monk clothing. It's clothing, it's not a helmet. And also for your Shadow Monk, who can teleport all over the battlefield and do damage uh multiple different enemies it's very easy to avoid the 1d4 necrotic damage penalty that this can give and your unarmed and your melee attacks will deal an extra two necrotic damage as long as you don't have your full health it's very easy to drop off a single set of small hit points by damaging yourself with an alchemist fire or something like that and drop down below your full amount of hit points, and then all of this extra damage um, pops in. The plus two bonus to attack rolls when attacking creatures that have already taken damage, again, very, very useful thing to have. The Cloak of Displacement is just awesome. For as cheap as it is, it's a little crazy <laughs> um, that this uh, is so good. Um, at the beginning of every turn, and that is every single turn, the cloak activates granting enemies disadvantage on attack rolls that target the wearer. Every single turn, you start out your turn with all of the enemies having disadvantage. And it that effect lasts until you take damage. If you apply that to somebody who's already got a 23 armor class... Um, it's going to drop to 22 if I remove the Cloak of Protection. But every enemy having disadvantage, even when I'm not standing in darkness and they're blinded, means that they're going to have to overcome a 22 armor class with disadvantage on that attack roll. Which means it is incredibly hard to hit you. And it resets at the start of every turn. So it's an incredible cloak. It's very, very useful to have. The Gauntlets of the War Master are your Battle Master Fighter build armor gloves. Targets have disadvantage on saving throws against your maneuver, also your weapon actions, and you get a plus a flat plus one to your attack rolls. Your maneuvers, so your uh, pushing attack, your tripping attack, your disarming attack, all of those things that cause the enemy to make a saving throw, they have disadvantage on those saving throws. However, it also applies to weapon actions. So if you have a specific uh, weapon action that is part of a proficiency unlock or something like that, or something like weakening strike or piercing strike or something like that on one of your weapons, they have disadvantage to resist all of those attacks, or those special effects. And last are the Snow Dusted Monastery Gloves. These are one of a set, we've already picked up one of them, I think, um, of the different elemental type gloves for monks. This is the one that allows you to deal an additional 1d4 cold damage um, and grants you the Ice Knife spell. So we are probably going to come through here and up Danthalon's attitude towards us so that we can buy these things for cheaper um, because some of them are fairly expensive 
um, in their pricing, especially the Gauntlets of the War Master if you're interested in buying those. He also has a great selection of arrows and potions. Um, this is where you have access to the Elixirs of Cloud Giant Strength. Dantalon will sell these and he will restock them. So you can buy it, you can go take a partial rest without wasting any camp supplies, come back here and he'll have restocked it. This allows your strength to go up to 27. That is a massive bonus for strength-based characters. And this is where you come at the start of Act 3 to stock up on these potions if you are using an open-hand Tavern Brawler Monk. Because your strength bonus being applied to all of your damage with a 27 strength is just massive. So this is definitely something, somebody that you want to up his attitude with because you're going to be coming back here quite a bit. The other very good potion that he always has is the Elixir of Viciousness. This reduces the number that you need for a critical hit by one, and that stacks with other things, or it provides the base, and then all the other things stack on top of it. So this is how you can get down to landing crits on 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Really ups your damage for your crit-based builds as well. For now, we're not going to pick um, any of this stuff up because, again, we're going to come back and up his attitude um, in a special way here in a little bit. For now, Jakira needs more friends like you. We just want to head downstairs and have our encounter. And the way down is through here through the double doors, down this ladder. Okay, and before we move too far in there, we want to make sure everybody's down the ladder. Hi, Harper. May Saluna's tears shine on this meeting. A very formal greeting, Geraldus. You are well? Yes, hi, Harper. Standing beneath Saluna's tears. The lad's a little nervous, Jahira. We heard of your great victory against Ketherick. Geraldus isn't nervous. He's terrified. And he's using Saluna's tears as some kind of code. I understand, Geraldus. Take a moment. And you, Harper. Mm. There is something familiar about you. Doesn't she remind you of our old friend, Marcus? Jahira's meaning is clear. Marcus was a traitor laying a trap. The same, it seems, is happening here. Okay, so we have some options here on how we want to... Um, go about this. And... By passing the insight check, we know what's happening here. We're being warned about um, something happening. And because of that, we want to initiate an attack here. This is going to give us a surprise round and make this fight significantly easier. Okay. So the enemy is surprised, all of them. So let's go ahead and get our attacks in here. Two steps at a time. And we're going to wait to cast darkness. That was just ugly. Oh, wow. 
will is just devastating people here. Just devastating people. We're going to do a slashing flourished ranged here. This is going to allow us to attack two different targets. Okay, now they're both frightened, so they're going to have disadvantage on their attacks, and we're going to move in here. Blood comes easy these days. What do I have to lose? Okay, now I knew what I was going to do with Jahira. I was going to cast Grasping Vine on this guy up here and drag him down, but Will just destroyed him. So I don't need to do, don't need to do any of that. By your command. So And now I'm pretty sure Will's going to be able to finish this off. <laughs> oh, jeez. Will. He just hits so hard when he lands a crit. And he's landing crits all the time. See, his attack, his attack rolls an 18. And he's critting on that. So, yeah, with his crit build on this, he was just destroying people. There was another crit on an 18. So, yeah, geez, Will. Will, just the man. So let's talk to Geraldus here. Very well. Did I... Uh, did I get it right? Selunus tears. It is said no false face can stand beneath their light. An old code, Harper. But yes, you got it right. Now I need your report. We had eyes on suspected cultists in the city, like you asked. We thought we were tracking them, but... They were tracking you instead, evidently. Doppelgangers. And they're not just working with the cult, our high Harper. They're part of it. Balists, I think. Answering to Orin the Red, then. Go on. Everything seemed fine until your latest orders. Until we started to search for the Rashimar. They struck the same night. I woke to one of them strangling Chelvin. While smiling at me out of her face. She said... It said... That I'd report back to you as normal. Louis, are you here? And... I had no choice! I'm sure it felt that way, Geraldus. The others were likely dragged back to Orin. Tortured. Sacrificed. I do not expect you to die for me. But to risk Antharl? Any citizen who might have wandered in? There is always a choice. And the Harper must be able to make the hard ones. Perhaps this isn't the life for you after all, Geraldus. No, Jahira! Hi, Harper! Please! I'm still a Harper. I want to help! You've scarcely signed up, boy. And there is a war coming. Why die a Harper when you could still live as anything else? I want to fight for Chelvin, for all of them, so it means something. 
Death is death. To look for meaning in it is foolishness, boy. Childish storybook nonsense. <laughs> exactly the kind the Harper would spout, I suppose. Fine. I have no right to make the choice for you. Not when this mess is of my making. I sent the Harpers hunting after the cult, without thinking what it would mean to be hunted in turn. Now they are compromised. And if not for you, I wouldn't even know it. I'm sorry, Geraldus. Harper. And I owe you an apology as well. I haven't told you everything I hope to learn here today. First, Geraldus, you're the last Harper in the city I can rely on. Lay low and rest while you can. I have matters to discuss with my friend here. Okay, before I do that, watch your elders and learn. I'm going to turn her helmet off during dialogues. Can't give up now. And now we can talk to her again. <laughs> Orin knows the hunt. In one stroke, she places the Harpers beyond our reach. Separates us from our pack. Until we know who the false facers are, we cannot trust anyone beyond ourselves. A shame of mine. Redoubled because I did not tell you everything sooner. Tell me, what do you know of a man named Mince of Rashomon. The name is as familiar as Jahira's own. A hero of the time of troubles, who saved the city more than once. But few know of his fate, I think. I had hoped to keep it that way. Minsk is an old friend. Perhaps my oldest. We fought at one another's backs, times beyond counting. And the last time I saw him, I left him to die. Before we ever heard of this absolute, we received word of a gathering in the Undercity. What we found was the first dark seed of this plot. A circle of cultists with mind flares in their midst. We might have ended it there, cut off at the root, but before I could send for help, Mince charged in alone. It was chaos. He was overrun, dragged down beneath a mass of tentacles. I had a choice. Stay and let word of this cult die with us, or leave him and live to fight another day. The world takes much from those who presume to defend it, but sometimes you get to take it back. So don't be sorry, because I mean to use you. If you're willing. Infection. Indoctrination. Eradication. That has been the fate of everyone the cult has captured so far. But it has not been yours. With your help, perhaps it need not be Minsk's either. As simply as that? For no other reason than that I asked? <laughs> Perhaps you two will get along. Oh, the point is moot without a means to find him. Without the Harpers, we shall have to find another path. I'll have a better idea of what that is once we're through the gates. Seems I need to reacquaint myself with this damned city. Okay, so... 
this is the first time that we learn um, what Jahira's real purpose here in the game is. She's obviously the head of the Harpers, but she's really trying to right a wrong in her past. And I'm so happy that Larian expanded upon this storyline. When they put out the teaser trailer and gave us a hint about Minsk, um, all of us who have played the previous two Baldur's Gate games really kind of jumped up and down crazy about seeing that. Um, because, yes, we are going to encounter Minsk later in the game. And yes, Smurf, he did. It wasn't just a hamster. It was a miniature giant space hamster, to be specific, named Boo. Um, and yes, we are going to have an interaction with them. And the voice actor who, voiced, who voices Minsk in the game um, is a person who I... I really enjoy um, watching um, as a person in real life. So we're going to learn a lot more about that. So here we have a kill order. Um, this is from Orin saying that we need to kill the crone. That's Jahira that they're talking about. Um, they're obviously going to string a harp with her hair and some other really... Uh, really mean stuff. Um, but we're going to do our, our best to prevent all of that. Something good here, I hope. Okay. And up here you have surveillance notes. You can read. And this is basically... Um, or in finding out more about the Harpers and trying to destroy them so that they can carry on doing what, you know, the Chosen wants them to do. Um, come in handy. And so far they have succeeded. You can do some searching up here, but again, I'm not going to pick up any more camp supplies and that sort of stuff. If not over, then through. It's not the same actor... Smurf is who it was in the original games. Um, but it is somebody who's very well known in Dungeons and Dragons uh, player circles. You guys can obviously go and find out who it is just by running a Google search, but we'll we'll hold off on any more spoilers um, on any more spoilers for now. So just taking a quick look here we do have some more alchemy ingredients we can put away we're going to move some of these things off to other people Real quick. Defender of the people. Yeah, he's, like I say, he's very, very well known uh, in the D&D &D player circle. Okay, just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. Shouldn't take me that long. Oops. Put all the trash away here. Okay, actually all of that can go over here. To rest. I don't want a trash bag. Okay. Have a lot on my mind. And well. So 
now we have exhausted what we need Jahira to do in our party. So, can carry me. so we will actually drop her off. And... We will bring Shadow Heart back in. Here she is. Already feeling better. In Jahira's place. Jahira's quest lines are completed until we get to the lower I city. The Not when Orin has them infested with shapeshifters. We're on our own. Though I suppose we're used to it by now. I hope so. So long as I'm willing to stroll right into the Mother Superior's trap, they have no reason to not tell me where to go. Worm's Crossing is a choke point. If I wanted to intercept a new arrival, I'd find somewhere before the bridge, blend in amongst the crowds, and wait. Most people seeking entry to the city will be refugees. I'd look wherever they're gathering. Okay, and that's all very true, and that's what we're going to go do now. Aside from the obvious. Your dance card is full. Lose a partner, and there'll be room for me. Wonderful. I was beginning to feel a little left out. Okay, so now we'll leave camp again. And we're going to head over toward where Ferg is. Now again, all up and down the street here, you're going to find vendors, and they're going to be selling various supplies, camp supplies, potions, that sort of stuff, and you can see them all here on the map. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities to sell items down here. We're obviously going to be concentrating just on Dantalon here, though. And we're going to be dealing with that more next week. So we're going to head all the way back down the main street. And head all the way back down to, you know, we didn't have to do that could just do that. <laughs> uh, and head right back where we came in, and that prompted me to go, oh, wait, we don't have to do that. So we're going to go down here and have the interaction with Ferg now that Shadowheart is in our party. And again, you'll see what happens with Ferg when we do this. I just lost a wager, thanks to you. Who are you? Someone who bets that you'd never be foolish enough to actually show your face in this city again. But here you are. And the gold in my purse is soon to take flight. There have been whispers about you, sister. About your faith. Your loyalty. I can't help but feel the strangest twinge of disgust as I look upon you. Is it true? Has our lady forsaken you? Okay, now there are different ways that you can play this out here. Um... I'm actually going to play this in a in a different way um, and see if there's a different outcome when I get to the finale of this quest. I'm not sure there will be based on this, um, but I'm going to find out. So I'm going to urge Shadowheart to lie here. Of course not. A cover to throw our enemies off the scent. I suppose you weren't deemed important enough to be informed of the plan. That would have been fine deception, in most cases. 
But your lying tongue cannot mask the empty pit in your spirit. She truly has abandoned you. Now I must report your reappearance. If you are intent on bringing matters to a head, then seek out the House of Grief in the Lower City. Though, if I was you, I'd be very tempted to just forget it all and disappear. You have some form of doing so, after all. Okay, and now you can see that Berg is going to leap. He is going to disappear forever, and you won't be able to interact with him or trade with him again at this point. And that's why if you want to do any trading with him, make sure you get it done now, because you see he just disappears. Um, and you won't be able to get him back. So now at this point, we have some options as to what we want to do. And we want to start exploring through Rivington. And we also want to be exploring up toward Worms Rock Fortress. There's a lot to do here in Rivington. And for the last 10 minutes or so, I think we want to just start here up this hill. The place was empty. Keep those thugs away from my family. Denuvia! Get these spotters out of my house now! Arthur, sweetheart, you paid me and my boys to be caravan guards, not cattle wranglers. If you want us to get our hands dirty, it'd be our pleasure. But that'll be extra. I just want to remove these unlawful interlopers from my property. I'm going to try to detect thoughts here. They're getting decent rolls tonight, Chad. I'm, in, I'm surprised. I can't let them stay here. What if the little frat gets into the basement? My basement? Oh, nothing interesting, just materials. I'm a craftsman, you see. This man is definitely lying. And he's really hoping you don't pry any further. Look, I have some very valuable components in there. I need to get that lot out before they damage something. Who do you think you are? Zenobia? People are lining up to break into my property. Do something about it. You paid us to protect you and your high-quality merchandise on the road. And we've since arrived at our destination. As I said, anything else is extra. Ugh. This is the last time I hire someone from the guild. Fine. Here's the extra. Finish. A job. Now, please show this meddler some of that famous Rivington hospitality. Okay. This is going to start a fight here. Um, the fight is somewhat interesting um, in how it can go. But again, we have some advantages here that they probably aren't expecting. However, we need to be careful with friendly fire here and be a little circumspect in what we're doing here and how we focus our attacks. But we can no holding back. do the normal set of, uh, you know, stuff that we're always planned around. And that is, of course, with darkness. Okay, and I'm going to kind of move back here a little bit with this. And I'm going to quicken Eldritch Blast. Now, the damage or the 
uh, people to watch out for is actually Gleeful Klong here um, more than anybody else. Just a little bit short. Yeah, not going to be able to get the third one with that. That's a shame. So I will just stack radiating orb as much as I can here. I'm going to drop the mall here. I am going to counter spell that. Never a dull moment. I've got more than enough. I do love that. <laughs> you, you just swing, you miss, and you beat yourself up. Um, that's that's just it's uh, it, like I say, it's just comical to me. I think you can take me on. Okay, there's the crit. There's that. We'll hit again. <laughs> Hit again. Best be on my way. And again. I wonder if this is worth the cost. And now for me, I should have used a short rest here beforehand, but I don't think it matters that much. One, I definitely want to make sure he dies, but I'm pretty sure that's going to kill him. What is that red line there? That's odd. Okay, so I got that wrong. That's a shame. This is what I mean by the being the most dangerous one here. I don't know if that hit or not. Okay. All right, so that was definitely needed. Stacked up, knocked him prone. No holding back. Will has advantage on all of these attacks against Scarpers. Just devastating. No choice but to keep Will going. is just the man. Now again, I need to be careful here. I don't want to hit Arfur. Yep, yeah, see, path is interrupted. Let's 
see if I can get around him. Survival is all that matters. With Zenovia and the others gone, I don't suppose you'll take no for an answer. All right, they can stay. Are you happy now? Now I have to figure out what I'm going to do. A broom can wait. After what you've put me through, I need a drink. Okay, and that's gotten us another inspiration. So what we can do here is we now have some guild members that we can loot. Heading out. Easy one. Okay, and that is oh there's one more thing that we can do real quick before we end things for today we're gonna head over this way pick up some camps or some crafting supplies Okay, there's the dirt mount. Autos! Nice. I love autos. It's a great spell. And in here, we have the strange ox again. Perception check that we can try and make here. A little better than 50-50. I think you're right, Lord Henry. I think all these rolls here are just masking the low rolls I'm going to get Saturday. Well, come close. Your mind to mine. <laughs> Satisfied? Keep quiet, and you won't have to find out. Good little hero. Though, perhaps your better nature would extend a little further for little old me. I need to get into the city. But it's hard to shuffle your way to the front of the queue when you're, well, big as an ox. But what if I was smaller, more discreet? Maybe then a kind soul might bring me through, right in their little pocket. Ooh, this day has ended so much better than it started. Now. You don't worry about me. I'll be a good, quiet little apple you can tuck into the corner of your pack. Just until we're inside the city walls. Hail, Cyric, 
I can't wait to get inside. Okay, so we're learning a little bit more about um, the strange ox. Very, very interesting visions um, that we're seeing. And he mentioned Hail Cyric. Now, um, Cyric is the Faerun god of lies, trickery, and violence. Um, before the Dead Three um, became gods, he was also over uh, murder and lies and that sort of stuff. Um, and he was the one who murdered Mistra that Gale mentioned previously, which caused the spell plague, which caused all magic users to lose access to the weave. Um, and when that happened, um, it kind of threw the entire <laughs> universe into chaos. Um, and that's started his fall from grace. So there's a lot of lore behind kind of what's happening with the strange ox. And we're actually going to see more of that as we get into the city. Um, but what has happened is that we should have gotten... A hero at heart. Never a dull moment. I wonder what the next move is. Another quest item. Am I missing it? Oh. Yes, it's back here. He turns into an apple that I have to pick up. Thanks, William. I was, I was just about to get there when I realized it wasn't in my inventory. Um, you can pick up the strange apple here off the ground, and that's what you're, you need to carry with you for the completion of that quest and that quest isn't going to complete itself until we get into the city of Baldur's Gate itself so for now we're just going to pick it up and carry it with us and we will see the conclusion of that fairly quickly um, so what we still have to do now is we have to investigate um, Arthur's house we are going to go look into it, and that's going to lead us over to the requisition barn over here. And the various things that go along with that. And then we're going to have to confront Arfur again, and Arfur is going to be back here in Charesse's Caress. We also have the Circus of Last Days, which is obviously very fun. And something that's going to lead us into a quest concerning that bloody torso we found. We have the Sword Coast Couriers that's going to lead us with a quest back into the Open Hand Temple. We have the, um, the Foundry here, which is going to lead us to the Iron Hand Gnomes by going in through this way. We also have a windmill up here at the top that's abandoned that we're going to want to go look at as well so there's a bunch of things to do before we even start exploring down here onto the western coast of the river camp the west side of worms crossing on the south coast of the river kianthar um, which is going to open up something else that we're going to want to have jahira with our party um, to explore in full so a lot of things to do here inside rivington before we get into uh, worms crossing any more than we already have but that brings us to a good spot to bring the stream to a close tonight again i hate apologizing for my internet service provider because i don't think they deserve an apology for messing up the stream but i apologize to all of you for the stream not going um, very well with the buffering there in the middle um, again i wish i could control that a little better it's normally pretty good um, but every once in a while we get strange drops like that so again i apologize for any of that sort of stuff and thank you all very much for sticking with me through that 
As always, thank you all for being here. Um, I really appreciate all the interactions with my chat. It's always a good time. And without you, none of this would be possible. So this is Commander Jorval saying, until next time, fare thee well.